All right. Th <clears throat> Thanks for staying with us. Now, education helps us get exposure to new ideas and concepts that we can use to appreciate and improve the world around us and the world within us. Education is a tool that breaks down all barriers. Education is part of the foundation of all progress and growth, both as an individual and as a society. All things are possible because anything can be learned. Now, on the 14th of February, 2022, the Academic Staff Union of Universities, that's ASU, again dared the federal government by declaring a four-week warning strike, having waited to no avail for the latter. Now, students have been out of classes since then, and Vanguard reports that um, the president, National Association of Nigerian Student NAS, Comrade Sunday, at Safe Home on Thursday, accuse Nigerian leaders of ignoring the plights of students who are at the receiving end of the ongoing strike action embarked upon by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, that's ASU. ASU strike is almost turning into a norm in our educational system and we need a permanent solution, And which is why we are asking today, can Nigeria truly afford um, to pay universities this 220 billion naira annually that is part of what they uh, um, say that they have agreed upon. Is Nigeria capable of paying this amount of money to the universities? Is the government capable? Now, today we are having a bit of challenge. We do not have our WhatsApp and SMS number. So when we open our phone lines, we'll just love to hear what you have to say. All right. So, ladies, I saw the video right um our dear annetta felix <laughs> she's doing us proud she did a research or she spoke to a few um students right and when i and the president of um asu and she spoke to a few lecturers that are lecturing abroad and it was just an interesting video to watch i mean if you've not seen it you can go on annetta's pages there annetta felix and first of all there is a set amount in trillions that the government, I think about um, how many trillion that the government was supposed to pay ASU, but what they had agreed upon was to break it down. 1.6 Once was, yes, <clears throat> trillion, you mean? So, trillion, yeah. yeah. So they had agreed to break it down to pay the universities 220 billion naira yeah. annually, right? And this negotiation, the agreement was done, I think, in 2019. 18. No, the renegotiation of uh, the 2009 agreement it was done okay, in 2018, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. You know, so I'm just wondering, um, because I listened to a particular professor that had talked about universities abroad, and this is what I always hear when they talk about universities. Education anywhere in the world is very expensive. It's not cheap, right? And so what people have done abroad is, first of all, there are students' loans, for instance, where mm -hmm. the, you take a loan and immediately yeah, you, you start to yes, time. immediately you start to work. You begin to pay back. So it is almost like a, they will give you like a jail term if you do not even pay that money. That's on one hand. So that mm -hmm. keeps the funds of the university flowing, right? On another hand, is most people, most universities are not funded by the government, right? It is funded by private, in private individuals, associations, companies, organizations. Yes, the associations, the alumni, you know, yeah. there are so many bodies that come together into ensuring that the quality of education is delivered at that premium that we see and we always want to go to when we say we are taking our kids or we are going abroad to go and study. So, you know, I've, I've argued this thing time and time again and I keep on saying, but people will argue and say, Uwa, if you leave, if you privatize, for instance, something like education, what you do is you're disenfranchising the poor people that they will not be able to afford it. But if ASU is asking for 220 billion, right? Let me even ask this first question. Can Nigeria even afford to pay them that amount of money? Given the situation of things that we have, Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you're not a nice person. <laughs> you're just a... That's just something else. All right, Jays. No, ma. I'm sure you have a lot to say. No, I do not. I do not. I would love to hear what you have to say. Are you about to try to repeat my topic? I, I mean, the name of my show. Right. You don't have anything to say. No, Let's just open the line. We, no, 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 we are on point. Elsie has we're something gonna to say. Speak. We're going to start from <laughs> I just want to pick it from some of the things you've said, mm. like student loans. 
It's a fantastic idea. I mean, when I was watching that video you shared, it, it made sense. But it will be difficult for them to implement it because there, is, there are no jobs. So if they give you a loan to go to school, Where is the they job know to make up that for there it? is no job to make up for it, right? And like you said, education is not cheap. What is our minimum wage? We are still quarreling 18,000 and 30,000, right? I think I saw something about Edo State. Edo State, Edo State, State paying it to 40. Well, that's yeah, like one out, out of how many states? 36 mm. states, right? So if, if they give you the loan, how many years would you work for to you to pay to back repay. that loan, mm. right? Then begin to now build your life as a person. Because what you're even being paid, in fact, let's not even go far. There, there are no jobs. So they should start by creating <laughs> jobs mm. first. And then I said something about um, the people who really run um, education in advanced words, uh, like private um, um, people, NGOs and all. And it reminded me of PAU. Right, you mm. know, PAU is owned by an NGO, mm. and if you go there, standard is what they look out for, no matter how much it's going to cost. The yeah. first step is standard, right? Um, but it also reminded me of the story you took, um, Oshibajo mm -hmm. and the group Oshibajo supports group, yeah, they are gathering money mm -hmm. and they are buying form of 100 million. Mm. So, if they are ready to buy form of 100 million, it means that if he, I mean, this is if, a big if. If it becomes the party flag bearer, right, they are ready to sponsor his uh, campaign. Yeah. And that's to tell you how much our priorities are misplaced as a people. Thank you. Right? Um, <coughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not going to hold brief for anyone or blame one person for the problems of Nigeria because we did not get here today. It mm -hmm. had been years and years and that years of absolutely. overlooking... Things we shouldn't have overlooked Absolutely. and corruption, covering it and covering it and then we're here right now. So it's not going to take four years, neither is it going to take eight years for things to get better. True. However, this vice president is the same man who is in this same government and if he had this level of um, influence to bring people together, to bring out this sort of money, what has he done in terms of education? Even if say, yes, the government is broke, we don't have money and ASU is on strike, I've never heard him make one statement regarding ASU. Have you ever raised up a the suggestion concern. or fundraising. concern to say, <laughs> let's raise funds and build mm -hmm. this university and mm. education because this education we are talking about is the future of this country mm. that you all are claiming that you want to rule or you want to lead to lead to whatever promised land people are promising. So if you cannot use your influence in that area, mm. please, what exactly is it that you want to do that you have not done with your OGA? that people are sitting down there right now, right? Mm. So I think that us as a people, I mean, I'm not going to say there aren't um, Nigerians who are doing a lot. Trust me, there are people who are working. Mm -hmm. They are putting back their money. They are Absolutely. looking for grants. They are doing... Like, we've, we've interviewed some of them. We know that things are happening. Mm -hmm. But Nigerians as a whole, our priorities are not right. That's one. Yeah. And secondly, we are also used to that... Um, proverb we always tell ourselves like if they push you against the wall you just break into the wall and I keep going you know <laughs> and that is what you see from that video as well where students are beginning to learn trades um, from hairdressing Absolutely. to makeup to fashion designing mm. in fact they are not even enthused to go back to school because for them if they are done with school what exactly is the are they going step? to do yeah so for most of them like i even have a niece who she does um, um fashion designing she's just in 200 level she's already making money people give her clothes she sews and all that they're not uh, they're not interested because the the picture after school is not, it's not enticing. looking good it's not looking you know, good so i just want to touch quickly on something you said and i'll come to Noma because part of what the lecturer was talking about you know i remember when i was in school right james Ibori was our governor then mm -hmm. when i was in school we had foreign lecturers. I had a foreign lecturer come to do like a um, oh, cross posting, okay. yeah. you know, where she came from on, on uh, what do they call that? Is it a, it's not sabbatical. Um, There's this the, the uh, name, I, I can't remember the name. Something. Exchange, exchange, yeah. yeah. whatever, Absolutely. to come lecture in our school. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine the excited, excitement that we had as students, you know, it's one village, you know, <laughs> that we had, we could, you know, do those exchange programs with our lecturers going abroad and they coming to Nigeria. So, I get this part of priority, and I think that is where the issue is. Because if we come back to this question, can Nigeria truly afford to pay this 220 billion naira annually to Asu? Yes, 
they can afford to pay it. But are they even placing priority where it should mm. be? Mm. Right? The, that is now the big question. But let me hear your thoughts, Namadi, now come back. Yeah, it's still on priority, right? Because um, when you think about it, education, I think it's the quote that you mentioned at the beginning. Education is an integral part of growth in any given society. Not when people growth. are enlightened when people uh, have a say in the decisions and decision making process for the outcomes of their lives then it's easier to channel them in the right direction and the more people who are exposed to quality education or um, um, uh, learnings that help them or empower them to become better people mm that the better quality of human beings that we're able to churn out. Hmm. Now, where our priority lies as a nation, we have seen it over time, hmm. in the kind of leaders that we've been able to churn out and the kind of decisions they make on our behalf. In today's case, we're talking about education. I don't know about you, but as far back as when I went to university, there was, in fact, one of the first... Uh, what, what will I call it? Uh, uh, Indoctrinate or uh, welcome. welcome was, was after matriculation. Mm. Our matriculation, they said we should go home for six months. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we wow. just came, wore our gowns, took pictures, and after that, school went on strike for mm. six months. We lost a couple of years, mm. and we I don't I don't know of anyone who graduated at the time that I did. Person. Oh, you did. I did. You, Where you, did you that, school? So that's what I'm saying. So Delta State University under sorry, no more under um, Ibori's government. Even when the strikes were going around, he said his own yeah, university. Yeah, so I think that happens in lawyers so, as well. Yeah. yeah. So, is this, so, so a, it, a, it is the priority that matters. A couple of yeah. schools were able to uh, uh, um, Move away avoid that. Yeah. But some of us, unfortunately, we didn't... Most... Some. Mo okay. Because this the is funding, even the university mild requires about it. a lot of funding. Yes, it and does. And he pumped a lot of money into the university, ensuring that the running of the school day to day was not was disturbed. There. Okay, right? so let's believe but that. But it's actually quite interesting that James Ibori is coming up in a very positive way tonight. Yeah, that, so, that I was just going to say that. Let's believe oh that. Oh man, no bad. That, go, uh, that government that actually believed like woman, so, in know, the future yeah, of Nigeria lot. in that regard. Uh -huh. Let me so, take but, a break. Elsie, <laughs> <laughs> when we come back from the break, we'll open our phone like stay with us. <laughs> All right, so it's our latest night out. If you just tuned in um, and we're discussing the ASU strike and we're asking, can Nigeria afford to pay universities 220 billion naira that they're asking for annually? Now, remember I said we do not have our WhatsApp or SMS line, so our phone line is open. Please call us on 0702500749. That's the number to call, 0702500749. Please remember, turn off the volume of your television set so we can hear ourselves. So, no, I'm sorry I caught you. <laughs> I don't know. Can, can, can you, have you recollected your thoughts? I'm trying right, to. Let me come back. Okay, the, go ahead. The, the truth of it is that the outcry has been from Time many memoria, years yeah. ago. Mm. And this, I, I do not want to believe that over this period of time, that it hasn't occurred to anyone in past governments to actually look into the issue that the ASU um, Association has raised over time. They made, uh, that professor made a number of points. Mm -hmm. He said things about renegotiation of the 2009 amendment. He said something about revitalization of public universities. We had some governments who just said, oh, we are uh, bringing up social university, this university, this university without funding. Mm. So how do you carry out certain projects, long-term projects like that without actually putting in the necessary funds or putting in the structure that will encourage effectiveness in that uh, 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 project or in that uh, assignment that you've put out. And you just give the facade that, oh, we're very concerned. And it seems like you are not um, uh, concerned about even the students. Yes, it is obvious that government cannot handle it alone. But where I'm trying to pitch my tent is that what have they done over time to mm. really tackle this issue? issue? Let me take our first caller for the evening. Um, okay, okay, from Abuja, Billy. Okay, Rie. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi. 
Thank you for calling. Let's hear what you have to say. You're live. Hello, good evening. Thank you for having me. Yes. Um, my contribution to the issue of discussion tonight basically is I think it's not an issue of affordability. Hmm. For me, it's um, a question like you rightly mentioned priority. That is the truth. Because True. if they can give a budget of what they are giving to security, to the Nigerian Army, to the Nigerian Air Force, to the Nigerian Navy. I think they can also prioritize things for education because when you are talking about allocating so much budget for defense, for security, to me that has been reactive. And it's cheaper to be proactive than be reactive. So if we put in half of that in quality education, emphasis on quality at education, all levels, it will you will not have to put in so much in terms of maybe defense and security because people will come out of school and get quality education, come out of school, get the same job, and don't move on with their life. That's my thing. Thank you so much. Okay. You know, it's so interesting. I was watching, I think I mentioned it the day I, I was done watching it, where, oh, is it Taraba now? I can't remember the state government that gathered, the state governor that gathered all the who and who, mm -hmm. how this was donating 300 million, wanting, wanting million, that they want to re revitalize the educational sector in that state. I think it's Taraba, I'm not sure now. Mm. Um, you know, it's everybody, all the big names, you know, the heavyweights, the, the power pushers. And like um, Elsie rightly said, if you truly understand the importance, and they know, they know the importance, they know how important education is, because you see, an educated mind, you cannot be tossing 2,000 naira and bag of rice Absolutely. for them for your elections. Absolutely. You can't be using them as thugs. You can't be using them as anything, Absolutely. right? So when I watched that fundraiser, they raised, it was in billions what they raised, mm. right? But I'm not looking at it. First of all, who is the person that, we, I don't have a problem with you raising that kind of money, but would they follow through? Mm. So they, can they point through? Can they do it? Make it okay. A national, a national thing. Issue, yes. Right? You raise this fund to be able to fund ASU. How much are they asking for? They're so it's supposed to be 220 billion. billion. So let me even say the way they have put in infrastructure, mm. where, for instance, big these big companies, banks, and all of that say you have a rebate for taxes, and they push some of them to, to the education. Room. Can we push those kinds of taxation? Because part of what they say they raise the money for, mm. it's from taxes. Mm -hmm. They raise money to fund education from taxes. So that's why when you come out of that educational system and you start to earn uh, your salary, they take it from your directly. They yeah. deduct tax. But well, let me take another caller, then I'll come back to you ladies. Ademola from Madek Adokiti. Thank you for calling. Yeah. Mm. Ademola, oh, I begged you to they turn down the volume. Yeah, they had to cut him off. Go ahead. You know, you're going to say. Yes, I was going to say, I mean, while you were talking, it reminded me of some, you know, okay, I'm not to name names, but there are people who are Harvard alumni, for mm. example. It's almost prestigious for you to say, well, I'm a Harvard alumni, because they have this association where you can actually pay in certain monies towards funding um, structures in the school or do it, carrying out one um, project or the other within the school environment for younger people or for n new students to come in to see. So when you plug into something like that, because you have been able to benefit from what this, as this uh, platform has to offer, it will be easy for you to be able to give back. Mm. So some of those give back initiatives if they but the thing is that a lot of these things are not genuine ah. we have a lot of incense sincere me, people who call themselves our leaders let me take a demo i think he's back i do a kitty thank you for calling you're live uh, let me say this uh, i really appreciate what you guys are talking about on the uh, ability of federal government to pay um, the 220 bill. But you see, what people don't know about this is because I am part of the system, mm. is that ASU is not really fighting for improvement. 
they are fighting for welfare. Mm -hmm. We are fighting for welfare of the association members. People don't understand that ASU is one of the biggest problems of the university system. Today, if you read in the news, mm. you are for it. And some other universities in the north and all that, they are getting accreditation, accreditation, accreditation. Mm. And yes, it's the same as you that we go to the press and say there are no infrastructure. The basic uh, things needed to get accreditation for courses are this infrastructure. They are the ones that also claim that the, 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 through NUC, NUC uses them as consultants, as accreditors, and they're the ones that will go to all those schools and say things are perfect so that NUC can give clearance for accreditation. So where is the problem of infrastructure? Mm. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, when you talk about this issue of uh, other things, that fund is there, is pumping over three, 230 billion era uh, as interventions regularly. Now, what are they doing with the money? Mm. Is the issue we want to talk about. Now, look at public universities. I mean, federal university, for example. I'm not even talking about states. States are just worrying them, say, by joining Central Asu to join this, uh, this, this, this problem. Now, are you telling, are you telling me that the uh, federal universities are not sustainable. They have student capacity and they are paying fee and all the rest. What is the management of those universities doing with those money when they, when their staff is being paid, the personnel cost, which is oftentimes higher than in the in terms of budget, is paid through the federal government? What are they doing with their IGR? Mm. So these are issues we need to really know. As the VCs. I think the issue of going, I will provide two solutions to this, my, my, from my own idea. Let every cover be paid, the student school fees be paid to the central bank. Mm. Let us have a central distribution system to each of those schools. Number two, let's look at alternative uh, sources of funding for our institutions. There are equity arrangement financing where that can come in, there are people who can come in and, and all the rest. So the issue of ASU is, is this your uh, their salary is what they are really paying for? If you really go on to is you understand the integrity of their demand. Thank you. Some of us who are in the in the system will know what is happening. Thank we you, Ademola. Thank you, Ademola. So, so uh, let me just stop there for a moment. I, 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 let, I let me listen to this lady uh, stop. Thank you so much, Ademola. <laughs> what you said like reminded me of something I read this evening mm -hmm. about the wives of um, VCs also going mm -hmm. to Turkey for for some course or so about one point something million mm -hmm. that they were going for a five day and i was wondering in the midst of <laughs> crisis <laughs> so you want to say something yeah so i mean i hear him and i've heard that angle argument as well. yeah and i think it is it's valid, it's valid as well i mean mm. all angles are valid if you're looking for solutions really mm. But I think the government has also failed in their own part. Now, from what he's saying, we're still talking about the corruption issue that we mm -hmm. always have in mm -hmm. every sector mm -hmm. in Nigeria, not just ASU right now, right? And you are accrediting, acc accrediting universities that... Accrediting, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> universities that are not up to standard and all that it happens, right? But if in this conversation, they are still able to point to the government to say you have not paid us our salaries or our allowances of, of some years. sort. It's not supposed to be. Mm. So even if ASU, which is why sometimes it's, when they are fighting for these mm -hmm. things and everybody is saying, oh, oh, it's just themselves they are fighting for, uh, they are not caring about the children. I, I, excuse me, if you're working, you need to be paid. Yeah. So if that part of the conversation was has not, not there, been, mm. I, trust me, if this government has paid, they would have come out by now to shout and shout and say, no, 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 we've made this payment. Mm -hmm. They are still owing these they people, people salary. which are not even supposed to be. So if, I, if you're wanting me to think from that angle, it's difficult for me because ASU is not the only corrupt uh, 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 sector in entity, Nigeria. Yeah. It's not the only corrupt entity. You even be surprised that when we say we are going to pay back into CBN, it will shock you. Yeah, that's that's what I, was, <laughs> I was coming to the CBN right. one, but let me take Daniel. I want to talk about that CBN okay. one because I don't mm. think that formula would work. Mm. Daniel, thank you for calling. You're live. Yes, uh, I'm Daniel Kilo, a uh, regular fan. Uh, yeah. Ah, praise the Lord. Oh. We have you live <laughs> today. Yeah, so uh, I, want to, I want to comment on the, the ASU strike, but I want to. Are we? Are, is, the, is the country that broke that they cannot invest that amount on education in Nigeria for a, for a year? Because I don't understand why they have to go on strike when the country can afford to invest in education. Because 
Si Sayesi made a statement which I agree that um, we have a misplaced priority, and which is right, because some of our, our governors and senators, House of Reps, House of Assembly, they go away with billions and trillions of naira. So, are we that broke that we don't have the, the, the money to invest in education and end this assault strike? Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, so when, when th thank you, we're not that broke. We can actually afford it. It, it is just where we lay where that priority. priority. In fact, we can afford much more than if that. We won't guess if we won't check. Of, if we look at the allocation, budget allocation. Yes, yes. now. And see then how it is. That as a country, uh, we're not a, a serious country. country. Whole, in fact, there's no you know, serious So I was saying that when he was talking about CBN having a central, like, that is that one is a complete can disaster. Mm. So I get that part. And that's why I would have preferred a solution that can we find. See, there are big universities running without any headache. Private what universities. Are the structures what is behind? the structure behind the management system? It's just like the way my, the you. school my children go uh, have been going to from primary school all the way now to secondary school. They have a body, so it's not this one man business. Mm -hmm. They have a, a a body, board of trustees. A board of trustees. They have board of directors. So when you see schools that have those kinds of structure, there is and always a proper structure to organize it. So why can't we say, you know what? I think the management of the funds, because you see. That IGRA mentioned is quite important. Mm -hmm. You cannot take away that there is school fees that are being paid, so many things that are being paid. Where is the money? How is it being managed? Mm -hmm. Right? So if we won't say from the eternally generated, generated revenue, funds. how mm -hmm. is that managed? Right? At least that internal generated funds should be able to take care of salaries, mm -hmm. should be able to take care of the maintainers of the the school. Do you know how much people students pay for student hostels oh. that they don't even end up getting the education? They don't want to go there. There is a lot of money. They don't even want to go it's there. The same how we're asking. So no, well, yeah. So how? <laughs> you know. So what I'm even saying is that can they, can we find a way to create a more corporate body mm. that co that that constitutes the management team? Of every university, and let us even see how far that will go. I Let's get work. business, I, no, so business work. people, business and business it's not, it's executives. Not work from a national level. It has to be on a state, state, state. No, definitely by state. Definitely. And, yeah. So and, you look at what you said regarding um, is it Delta State now? Yes. And there are other states too that you can mention that they that can tell have you things are happening. Yeah. Maybe not on this scale you're talking about, and I think it people need to really sit down look into and begin it. to ask questions because. It is not just about ASU. And we like this association, association thing in this country. And it's still so sad that the association we like is not helping the matters because mm -hmm. we just form an association of, in fact, Pepper Sellers has association. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing about the agenda of what the association is going to do that will benefit even the people the in the people association. In you just see people that want to continue embezzling money. We are it's the escorts still... of this association. And I don't know what And you see that thing, those things, sorry, Norma, those things, it doesn't breed transparency. So imagine a state where an Ibuku Awoshika is coming from. She would gladly, with honor, sit the on the yeah. board to say, you know and what, let us look at this financial ground. structure it's not, it's of your business. It's really a paid, a paid job. Job. No, it will not be. No, there are people who will It will not be a paid job. And you'll be shocked at the number of people that would volunteer mm -hmm. to say, we know what, we want to make this university profitable. There are so many things that can be done. Well, it still speaks to the level of sincerity of the people involved. Do they really want this structure? structure to be in place is a question there are so many people when you're talking about all these things it's not their problem it's not an issue for it's it's different when you are directly affected by the issues on ground but a case where you don't you may not be able to connect with the problems because it's not your problem mm. if we have more people who can feel the pulse of the people at the end of the day this uh giant war between ASU and government, who is suffering at the end of the day? Hmm. Is it not the Nigerian citizens? Is it not the Nigerian students? Some of the, the videos that we the, we watch, some of them have gone on to different things. So go and learn different uh, skills just artistry, to continue to tailoring. help themselves, to be to beef themselves. So at the end of the day, they are the ones suffering. And our uh, the, the, until we have genuine people Absolutely. who can volunteer their services or their expertise and create that platform where we can now start seeing uh, uh, um, uh, what's the word we can now start seeing uh, um, transparency know, Absolutely. Let, let me take a caller I think we have a caller I'm sorry I didn't get your name Joe oh, right? Joey from Sokoto Toh 
Salam alaikum. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, let me just correct one or two impressions. The 220 billion is not meant for us. It's meant for the Ministry of Education or any government agency to provide infrastructures mm. in the universities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Secondly, every penny that comes to the university goes to, to the TSA account. That is treasury single account of the government. Mm -hmm. So there's a way they monitor what comes to the universities through that. So it's already with the CBN or whatever, with the federal government already. And so the, the school fees paid by students is already subsidized. Another, another way to solve this problem is to remove subsidy, which as is not supporting. And when I support them, you cannot ask a student to be paying 200,000, 500,000 the same way is uh, being paid in private universities. Because uh, the minimum wage is already 30,000 per month. Mm -hmm. And you want even, even as members will not be able to afford 200,000, 500,000 to pay for the awards. Mm. So you should be careful about uh, all these arguments. So I like what you are saying, Joy. But you see, um, when you talk about students not being able to pay for a certain um, amount of uh, what's it called money for for school fees and all of that how we how we would we then move forward me i find i'm trying to find the solution because we know globally education everywhere in the world is not is not is not the same government. Hold, hold on let me finish education everywhere in the world is not cheap right it's not cheap so how do we find a solution how do we find a balance that it gives quality education at the same time the student is not you know is, is not giving an arm and a leg for it okay you you mentioned it about prioritization the other time we can really mobilize four trillion naira for swap society which is okay i'm not criticizing that if you have to pay then we should pay it but you can mobilize four trillion naira per year to pay subsidies why can't you do the same thing for for universities in Nigeria. How it is. Then again, you always argue that the education is not cheap everywhere. We've been to a number of countries, even the Scandinavia countries where there are no school fees. There are no school fees, but those countries are subsidized. So there are no school fees, but those countries food eaten by students in the restaurants are subsidized. Their transportation subsidized. True. Almost everything is based on subsidy. Mm. Thank you. This this these are facts. Absolutely. But we don't know where those take off. Maybe all the Western countries, so you have to go and call No, them. so I know. Thank you so much, Joey. We have to let you go. You know, but I know that most of the Scandinavian schools are, what's it called? They are free. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are some schools that from, from zero to the whatever level is free education. But you see, in those structures, right, mm -hmm. they, ha they are heavy on taxations. They are heavy on... There's a way the government is collating that money. And there's a structure that when you are done with the school, you are able to even... Desired. You will be able to pay back. You, you understand? You start paying to also to the post so For that somebody future. else will be educated yes, because you got educated. Right? So it's a systemic problem. And there has to be a structure that works. We can't, we can't be having, you know, taxes not being collected properly. The, the, the places that were supposed to be generating revenue were not generating that revenue. Do you get? We can't have that. If we, if we have all those systems put in place, then we can afford to even say every Nigerian will go to school for free from zero to, to what level, whatever level you want to go to. So I like your argument. It's good. We hope, to, we hope they are listening. But ladies, I think we ran out of time. Elsie is quiet. <laughs> we ran out of time. So I'll just say that until we are ready to do things right, um, we'll still keep going round and round in, in circles because you can't do anything right if you're not ready to do it mm -hmm. right. You know. So I think that's just where I'll end it because there's really nothing more to say. Nigeria, when Nigeria is ready, we'll move. We'll know. Yeah. In doing things right, our priorities have to be set right as well. Mm. Do we really want um, education for our Nigerian citizens because it's the quality of citizens that we churn out at the end of the day that will either compound or reduce the problems already the existing problems and challenges that we already have in, in the Nigeria. country. Thank you to everyone that called. Well, maybe, just maybe, we really need that law that would ensure that those that are in government, especially governors and President, everybody and all. Mm. from council level, you must have schooled in children. Nigeria. You first, you must have schooled in Nigeria, right? Uh, even if it's At just to some your form of education or to your first degree, right? some level, then education your health too has to be here, and your children <laughs> cannot school outside. Then I believe that we'll begin to do things. It's at all levels, or but uh, if LC. the case now is you can be president here, but your child is graduating from 
UK and then you see go there, you take picture and you post it. Did you did you we see that? Ready. Did you see the, that season where all their children were graduating? Uh -uh. <laughs> and we are posting it. <laughs> we are posting it on social media. Ready. Why wouldn't they graduate? Yeah. Well, yeah. so there will be strike. It doesn't really affect it, anybody. It doesn't affect Absolutely. Them. Okay, on that note, thank you to everyone that called. Thank you for your messages. Oh, unfortunately, we did not see them in case you sent it there. <laughs> Before we go, ensure you follow us on Instagram at Ratio Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. Education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. I'm really, really worried about what our tomorrow looks like based on just the educational um, challenges or structure that we have in place in Nigeria. We'll see you guys live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.